hello hello everyone good evening good morning good afternoon wherever and where you are watching me from my name is fina happy sunday to you happy sunday to you all today's topic is amazing it's beautiful one you know fina talk always have amazing beautiful topic every time and this is another wonderful episode of fina talk so today's topic you know uh would be how do we overcome challenges you know in the world today we have a lot of challenges we have a lot of pro uh, things troubles around us some people are giving up their faith you know i'm talking to christians now some people also even people that are not christian right now they are wondering which way to go so how do we overcome challenges how do we overcome challenges you know, so we'll be seeing them in the word of God. What Jesus said that this time will be, you know, this time where we are right now is the time that, you know, Jesus have already talked us about how to overcome it. And I have just uh, uh, some few scripture to tell you how you handle challenges. So in case you are watching me for the first time, this is Fina Talk. You are welcome to Fina Talk. Let's talk about it. All right, so I want you to open your Bible with me. You know, always, I always read the Bible because we relate everything with God's Word. So I want you to open your Bible with me right now in case you have one. Let's share the Word of God together. So I will be um, reading right now. I'll be reading, reading my, my first scripture in the book of John. So we'll be reading John, that said John. So let's read John 16, 33. And Jesus is the one talking here. Jesus is the one speaking here. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus was talking to the disciple here. This was the time, you know, that Jesus was, you know, about to be crucified. So he was talking to the disciple here about this. He said, I have spoken those words to you. He said, in me, you will find peace. But in the world, tribulations, trouble. Because some people say, why me? Why me? Why me? Why me not the challenge? So we are talking about how do you overcome challenges? We hear what Jesus is saying here. He said, I have overcome the world for you. Jesus has overcome every challenge for us. In the cross of Calvary, he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. It means that every challenge that comes to your way, it is finished. Jesus deal with them. He has already dealt with them on the cross. So what do you need to do now? Somebody will say, oh, I face a lot of challenges too much. I don't even know how to come out of it. I don't even know how to deal with the challenges. I don't even know what to do. I have this problem here. I have problem with my work. Or I have problem with my children, my family, or maybe with the society, or many things. I don't really know how to deal with it. But Jesus has said to you, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He said, in me you will find peace. What do you now need to do? Jesus has to be your refuge now. In case you are watching me, you are not born again. You may not understand what I'm saying. But just listen, follow me carefully. At the end of this program, I will lead you to Christ. You will become one of us. Then you will understand what we are talking about you know, Jesus is your peace. How to, how do you do, how do you come out of challenges? It's through the word of God. God has made it clear to us. No any other way, no any other way that any man is being saved. No any other way that you will have peace. You hear what Jesus said? He said, I read it again. Very, very important. This scripture is so striking. I love it. He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that, he, that ye may have peace. He said, in me 
you will have peace in me. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation. Means that in the world we live today, tribulation will always rise up. You must have trouble. God did not promise us that we are living in a world without trouble. You may have challenges. But what did he say? He said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Means that I have overcome the world and their system. I have overcome every challenges in the world. So what do you do? He said, be at peace. Be at peace. Do you understand? He said, in me, you, you may have, you will find peace. But in the world, the world is full of trouble, chaos here and there. Say, so you as a Christian, what do you do? You take refuge in the Lord. So let's look another scripture. Let's let's read uh, Psalm Psalm ninety one. That is one of my favorite scripture. I love it so much. Psalm ninety one verse one. He said, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty." He that dwells. The Lord is your peace. He that dwells. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abound under the shadow of the Almighty. Means that he abound under God's protection, God's coverage, God's shield. I read verse 2. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. In him will I trust. Means that in every challenge that comes my way, in God I trust. In him will I trust. Hallelujah. Say the Lord, he said, He that dwell in the secret place means that for you to overcome your challenge, dwell in the secret place of the most high. Dwell in God. How do, how do we overcome challenges? The topic. Through God's word. We overcome challenges through the word of God. Through the meditation of God's word. What did God's word say concerning that challenge you are passing through? Through that thing which you are passing through. What did God say? You search the scripture. You are not there to complain about the challenge. Because even though you complain about the challenge from now to tomorrow. The challenge will not go. The trouble will not go. What do you do? You use the word of God to deal with the challenge. So I will be reading some of those words for you now. That you will be using. The word of God is the weapon that we have. The word of God. So I'm talking to you as a Christian. If you're not a Christian, before the end of this program, I will lead you to Christ. So that you use the word of God to deal with every challenge that comes to your way. And you become victorious. Because why? God has already made us victorious already. You don't allow challenges to consume you. You don't allow challenges to set, you know, the direction of your life for you. No. But you allow the word of God to rule over those challenges. And those challenges become bread for you. Those challenges become bread for you. Which, those challenges become, you know, nothing for you that you pass over. You pass over. Glory to God. Like me that I'm talking to you, you thought, oh, uh, what are you saying? Maybe you have not really got, got through some challenges. Go to challenge I'm going through right now. That's why you are talking like that. My dear, I'll tell you, if I tell you many things about challenges that have passed through, you will say, oh my God, means that yours is small. Because, you know, because somebody did not come to tell you about his challenge, does not mean that your challenge is, big, is bigger than everybody. Maybe somebody else will tell you about his challenge. You'll say, oh my God. So, but what we use in dealing with every challenge we face is the word of God. Because we have victory already in Christ Jesus. So what sustains us is the word of God. 
if you don't have the word of God, like as what I just read for you in John, in, in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said, in me, you will have peace in the world. But in this world, in this world, in this wicked world, he said, you will have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer. Means that relax yourself, be calm. Because why? I've overcome the world for your sake. Just for you, I've overcome the world. I have won the victory for you. So what do you do? You proclaim your victory. You proclaim the word of God. You declare them. And you see yourself in the high you know, in the high level over those challenges. Those challenges become bread for you. The word of God. Let's read, let's read, take another scripture. Let's read the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter, uh, chapter one. Let's take Joshua chapter one, verse eight. And he says, said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. See that? See, this book of the Lord means that the word of God should not depart out of your mouth. We overcome every day with God's word. Because why? We meditate on God's word. Through meditation, everything you are passing through today will become bread for you. True meditation of God's word. And he give us victory. Hmm. The, the, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate de, uh, during day and night. So I'm telling you, how do we overcome challenges? Through meditation of God's word. He said, don't allow this word to depart out of your mouth. God is our rock, is our refuge. And he has assured us, given us assurance in his word. Everything we need today in life is wrapped up in God's word. What do you do? You take God's word. You meditate on it. You will see all those challenges, how they will be flying out, flying out. How you are coming up victoriously, you know, like you have never passed through anything. I normally say to myself, I say, in any challenge I pass through, I say, he come to pass. <laughs> because that is what the Bible says. He came to pass. He didn't say he come to stay. But you know, some people are so much to magnify challenges that the challenge have stayed with them. They so much magnify it. Oh, my challenge. Oh, I'm passing through this. Oh, I'm passing through that. You are just talking. What are you doing? What is your action? What is your reaction towards that challenge you are passing through? Towards that problem you are passing through? You are only just talking. You are only complaining. Like I said earlier, complain will not solve that problem. What will solve it is God's word. You declare God's word over that challenge. I always say to myself, I say, this challenge come to pass. Glory to God. I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself already at the end of that challenge that I'm giving testimony. Glory to God. I'm seeing testimony out of that challenge already. That I'm already testifying how this challenge has come to pass. From the beginning of the challenge, I'm, I've already seen my victory at the end. That is how it is. Don't magnify the challenge. How do we overcome challenge? Through God's word and meditation. Let me finish reading this, um, the book of uh, uh, Joshua. And he said, You meditate day and night that thou mayest observe to do according all that is written therein. For, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then, then thou shalt have good success. You see what I say to you? Is the word of God. Are you facing some financial challenge? This is it. This is the word of God we use. True meditation. 
God was saying to Joshua here, he said, this book of the, of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Means that things, the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth. He said, thou shall meditate, meditate, labor, sota. You meditate on the word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in great pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. You meditate on the word. You, 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 you think about the word of God. You see yourself how you come out of that challenge, that circumstances. How you're already victorious already. You meditate on God's word. God, your word have said like this. God, your word have promised me like this. God, your word have said like this. In the name of Jesus, I stand on the word. I stand on your word and I say amen to your word. I receive the victory. You begin to picture yourself coming out of that challenge. How do we overcome challenge? Is the topic of Fina Talk today. I tell you my own testimony. Yeah, it's now a story now because it's my testimony. You know, I was I was in this country for how many years? And I have my, my, my document and uh, with some reason, some reason, and uh, the government uh, um, uh, took the document from me and they asked me to leave the country. Maybe I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody. So I'm talking to somebody. Just listen to what I'm, I'm about to say to you. And the government asked me to leave the country. And, uh, <laughs> you know, in such situation, you smile first, you know, you just laugh, you know, you just smile, you know, because you listen, you hear God's word. And I say, okay, the, the first time I, I took lawyer and I, um, lawyer helped me to deal with the case because it was not normal for the government to ask me to leave the country because, uh, they gave it to me and, um, uh, based on, on some certain things, so I have the rights. Then I took lawyer at the beginning, and the lawyer deal with the issue for me and charged the government the government to court and charged them, and the government pay me money for for denying denying me from that document. So what happened? The money that the government paid me, the lawyer took took the money because you know the, the lawyer the lawyer had to for his work. So the lawyer charged the government to, uh, to call and sue them and the government pay me some money for asking me to leave the country, for stopping my documents. Then that, that won't pass. So just for about a few months, it's not even up to maybe like six months, few months, it's not even up to a year, just six months. The same thing happened. The government sent me later again and asked me to leave the country. That this time around, the Holy Spirit said to me, <laughs> you have all it takes to stop this forever. Because you keep on going to the lawyer, the lawyer will keep on doing whatsoever they are do doing and taking money from you. It may continue because the lawyer is working also for the government and also is working for himself. The Spirit of God said, you have what it takes to stop this for forever. That was how many years ago? Then I received the letter. I've listened to my man of God, Pastor Chris, when he said, when you receive a letter like that, what do you do? You put it on the floor. You dance around it. You read, you, you read some scripture of proclamation, of declaration. You put the letter on the floor. Dance around it. Sing and dance around that letter and go to bed don't even think about it again just go to bed and i did the same i took the letter i put it on the floor i dance around it i sing i sing i sing i dance around that letter i put it on the table i went to bed by themselves by themselves they wrote me out that letter oh it was a mistake it was a mistake. That letter was not for you. <laughs> that is after some weeks. After some weeks. I didn't even respond to them. After some weeks, they wrote me another letter. Oh my God. That letter was not for you. It was a mistake. 
that letter was not for you. <laughs> he said, God that answered every prayer that you pray, every request, he said, why you are here calling? He said, I will hear you. So let's read another scripture. Let's read another scripture because this thing you are seeing them in God's word. God, God is telling you what he wants you to do. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. He said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lay not, lay not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Did you hear that? Trust him with all your heart. That is what the Lord wants you to do. Trust him with all your heart. Just say, Lord, I trust you. With this thing I'm passing through, I trust you. I know I'm coming out victoriously in the name of Jesus. I know this challenge will not swallow me up. I know this challenge has come to pass. Challenge came to pass. It didn't come to stay. So what you do, God wants you to trust him with all your heart. Say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lay not to your own understanding. Don't think you can figure it out by yourself. Don't think uh, uh, you use your, your, your five senses to figure out the challenge how you want to. No. Trust in the Lord and lay not to your own understanding. In all thy way, acknowledge him. Bring him into, in, 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 bring him in. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will tell you the way to go out of that challenge. The main challenge you, you face to today, the spirit of God is telling you, do this, do this, and you get your victory. But some people are not listening because why? They, they, they don't meditate on God's word. Everything in life today, everything in life, any everything you need is in the word of God. It's wrapped up in the word. That is how my pastor would say. Everything you need is wrapped up in the word of God. Is it promotion you need? It's wrapped up in the word. Is it prosperity? It's wrapped up in the word. Is it health? Are you dealing with your health issues? It's wrapped up in the word. Say, by his stripe, I was healed. Say, if the spirit of Christ, of him, that have raised up Christ from the dead, he said, if that spirit dwells in you, he said, it will vitalize your mortal body. Everything in life today is in the word of God. If that same spirit, that raised up Jesus from the dead, he said, if that same spirit lives in you as a Christian, it's not, a, it's not a child of God that should be suffering from sickness, disease, infirmity. Because Christ has died for He didn't die on the cross in vain. He died to give us life and life in abundance. Not life of trouble. He said, be of good cheer, relax yourself. I've overcome the word for you. So what do you do? You hold God by His word. Because He has overcome the word for you. Every challenge you are passing through today, Christ has overcome it for you. So what do you do? Walk in the victory. 
of, of that which the law has already done. Walk in that victory today. Walk in the victory through God's word. See every challenge you pass through, look into God's word. God's are, God has already made provision in everything you pass through today. Oh my God. God has already made provision through his word. So meditate on God's word. So I would like to read some scripture again for us. So let's go to 10.4. I read the scripture. I said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of struggles. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted himself against the knowledge of God, and bringing unto captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see that? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not things that you see with your physical eyes. Challenge that comes to your way today, what is it? They are not things you see in your physical eyes. Some people say, oh, why me? Why this challenge? But the Bible is telling you, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You don't use the carnal things to, to, you know, to deal with spiritual things. The weapons of our warfare are not something you see in your eyes. You don't use your five senses. But they are mighty true God to the pulling down. Means that you have to be in God. Oh, glory to God. You have to stay in God. For the weapons are not carnal. They are not made sin. They are not things you figure out. But they are mighty true God to the pulling down of struggles. Struggle means the challenges you are passing through. Maybe in your working place, in your, in your family, in your marriage, maybe with your children, or maybe in your career, or your, or your business, anything at all. These are strong goals. Bringing one challenge, another to your way. But the Bible said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty true God to the pulling down of every strong goals. Casting down every imagination. Your mind is powerful. Our mind is powerful. Our mind, you know, is the road, you know, which the, 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 the devil passed through and also God's word passed through. So what do you do? You transform your mind, your mind, your, your imagination. See yourself coming out of that challenge because that challenge came to pass. Declaring God's word. But don't allow negativity to hold you bound in your Declaring, mind. Declaring, proclaim things to be. Are you seeing some things that you don't like in your life? Use your mouth to channel them in the right direction. Don't be so distracted. Because in this world, like Jesus said, say, is full of tribulation, problem, distraction. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Distraction is dangerous. Oh, 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 I can tell you that. Distraction is dangerous. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. Be focused. Glory to God. Be focused. Have a direction. Have a clear picture of who you are, what you want to be, what you want to become, the place you are going, where you are going to, what the Lord has said to you concerning your life. Have a clear picture and have focus and direction. Don't allow your, 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 your attention to be divided. Be focused. Oh, that's one thing Jesus did. He was focused. He knew his assignment. He knew his purpose. He knew the reason why he came. So he was focused. Nothing distracting. Even while the Pharisees and all the Jews were trying to, he focused. He had it because why? He knew his purpose. He know why he came. How do we overcome challenges? For you to focus, have a direction, a picture of what you want to be. Something may come to your way in the midst. You say, no, that is not what I saw. Or that is not where I am going to. So, clear off. And you have a clear picture. 
and direction of who you want to be. I think let me take one uh, one more uh, scripture then I think we can round up for today. Let I love it. it. Psalm 27 is one of my favorite psalm. One of my favorite psalm. Psalm 27. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I hope you are learning something. I hope you are being blessed. Wow. Okay, Psalm 27 from verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read part. You know, where I'm talking about declaration, you, are do, you, you open the scripture, you declare those words to yourself, and you see how your life will grow from one level of glory to another. Amen. So I'm reading Psalm 27 from verse 1. It said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Glory to God. Oh, I love this. And in verse 2 said, When the wicked, even my enemies and my folks, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Are you facing some uh, uh, challenges, some, some spiritual challenges? This is the word of God. Said the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Are you so fearful at night? Is it is it your challenge? You are so fearful at night you can't sleep. The Bible said the Lord give sleep to his children. Sound sleep. You sleep like a baby. Are you facing any challenges? And one of the challenges is fear. You are so fearful. So the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my folks, came upon me to eat up my flesh, he said, they stumbled and fell. Nothing in this world should make me be afraid. Because why? I have the most high God on my side. He lives in me. He talks through me. He walks through me. Oh, glory to God. He sees through me. Whom shall I fear? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So your enemy is not your uncle, it's not your sister, it's not your brother, it's not your mother, it's not your auntie, it's not, it, 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 it's not your friend. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and power. So whom shall I fear when the Lord said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the word for you. It's a thing that be of good cheer, relax yourself, you know, chill, you know, enjoy yourself. I've overcome for you. So whom will you fear? No more fear. My fear has disappeared since the day I gave my life to Jesus. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Glory to God. Woo! This, are, this is the way you overcome challenges. You smile. You become, you know, somebody will be seeing you. So, oh my God, is it not this person passing through this? They are not seeing the challenge in you. Why? Because you deal with it with God's word. This is how to overcome challenge. Through God's word meditation. And declare a proclamation of God's word. Proclaim me, affirm me. Affirm God's word for your life, for yourself. And you come out that challenge. There's nothing. There is nothing that is too big to hold you down as a child of God. There is nothing too big that you can overcome. If Jesus has overcome the world, there's nothing anymore for you you can overcome. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Let me take one more scripture. I love the word of God. I love it. I and love he it. said, Isaiah 54 verse um, uh, 17. He said, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that 
that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt contend. So you have the power to contend. He said, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You have the power. He said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Say every tongue that rises up against you, you would condemn them in judgment. You condemn them. He said, this is the heritage. You inherit this from God. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. I love the word of God. The word of God is my life. It's my light. It's my direction. Christians, study God's word. That challenge you are passing through, you will not pass through it. Study God's word. Meditate on God's word. Rejoice in his word. Because he has done everything for us. And he, also, he has given us his word. His word is all what we need. He has given us his word. In every challenge you pass through, use God's word. You come out victorious. You don't need anything. You don't need somebody to go and do uh, 40 days prayer for anything whatsoever. Or do fasting and prayer for anything. Use the word of God. The word of God works. He works. He produces results. That person also that is doing fasting and praying for all for 40 days or whatsoever, the person also has his own challenges. As he solve it, nobody can pray for you like the way you pray for yourself. Nobody. Nobody can study God's word for you like the way you will study God's word for yourself. Christians these days are so lazy to study God's word. Study God's word. Meditate on it. And it become your life. You will be living above. Some people, you will be living heaven on earth. Every challenge that comes to your way is bread for you. You chew it like bread and drink water. Or you drink coke on it. Glory to God. I think I would still like to take last scripture before we round up tonight. Let's take up the, you know, the last scripture. Let's take Romans chapter 8. I love Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8 is full of wisdom. Go and study. Study the book of Romans chapter 8. Study from beginning to the end. I'm telling you, your life will never remain the same. Okay, let me, read, let me take from the book of Romans chapter 8. Let me read from verse 20, uh, 32. Well, 32. Yeah, I think I read, I take from there. And say, He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things. He said, He that spared not his own son, but he gave it to us, Jesus Christ, to die for us. He said, How can he not? Freely give us all things. So the Lord has given us all things, which is his word. Everything we need is in God's word. It's wrapped up in, in his word. So go for the word, like my pastor would say. Go for the word. Meditate on the word. Your life will be moved for upward and forward only. If we can dare meditate on God's word, if we can dare study God's word, everything we need in life is in God's word. Peace is in God's word. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Prosperity in your family, in your marriage, everything is in God's word. Dare to meditate on God's word. So let me just take that Romans chapter uh, eight. Let me take from um, verse one now. So the last scripture is that there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin.
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me, has made me finna, free from the law of sin and death. I am free from the law of sin and death. I'm alive unto God. Glory to God. <laughs> Ooh, I'm alive unto God. Is death strengthening you? Say, I'm alive unto God. I am free from sin and death. Say, there's no condemnation. Don't condemn yourself when the Lord has not condemned you, when the Lord has given you life. Say, there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Are you a Christian? You are still feeling condemned. Oh my God, read this. There's no, there is therefore now, now, he didn't say yesterday, he said now, means that now as I'm talking to you. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me, had made me free. It has done it, had made me free. From the law of sin and death. I'm alive to God. Glory to God. I'm alive to God. I'm a wonder. I'm alive to God. I belong to Him. Hey, hey. Ooh. I belong to Him. I'm alive to God. Glory to God. Oh, wow, wow. This is the much we can take because of time. This is the much we can take because of time. In case you are watching me, you, you, are, you are like thinking, what is this lady talking about? You don't understand. It's because you are not yet in Christ. I would like to give you the opportunity to accept Jesus into your life. If you've never received salvation, if you've never received Christ into your heart, if you've never experienced this life of Christ that I'm talking to you about, this is your moment. Say these words. Say, Oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe He died to save me. I believe God raised him from the dead and he's alive today. I confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day. And by my faith in him I receive eternal life into my heart into my spirit thank you lord for saving my soul i have eternal life now i'm a child of god now i am born again thank you lord if you just said that prayer along with pastor chris congratulations welcome to the family of god Amen. Congratulations if you just said those simple word of prayer. You are now a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. Where all things are possible. Glory to God. So in case you just said those simple word of prayer, I want you to send me a message. I will set, send you a book now that you are born again. Written by our, man of, our dear man of God, Pastor Christo Yakrilo. So you can read and study for yourself and it will guide you into the journey of your, of your, of your, of your new life. Also, you can send a message in case you want to fellowship you know, with us. You can send me a message and I will, I will direct you where you can go and fellowship. God bless you until I come your way next time. Bye-bye.